Welcome back. Today I've got another Borderlands 2 build for you guys off the Vault Hunter Gage, the Mechromancer. I'll be going over what skill points I'll recommend putting your points into and what gear and guns I'll recommend as well. If you give us a like and subscribe, that'll be much appreciated. And yeah, let's jump into the build. So we've got Ordered Chaos, we've got a smaller, lighter, faster. Increases your reload speed but decreases your magazine so you get a plus 54% reload speed but minus 9% magazine size with the uh, legendary anarchist plus 5. Then we've got anarchy which is your main uh, damage skill so this will give you a 1.75% uh, damage increase per stack up to 400 to 600 stacks depending on what class mod you have on which I'll talk about later um, but you get a decrease of 1.75% uh, accuracy per stack so there's only certain guns that are viable with her um, in OP10 because of the accuracy uh, and I'll be showing you those uh, select guns and gear as well then we have the blood soaked uh, shields you want to get this at plus four and not max this out because you have a, another kill skill that will also regenerate your shields as well and instantly restore them after killing an enemy so pretty much what this does this restores 80 percent of your shield but you lose four percent of your current shield after you kill an enemy so you immediately get 80 percent of your shield back instantly um, so yeah, definitely want to pick this up, but make sure you get it at plus four. Then we have pre-shrunk cyberpunk, gives you an extra 250 anarchy stacks, that gives you uh, 400 anarchy stacks in total, and 600 with the uh, terramorphous class mod. Then we have typecast uh, no class, 60% chance of gaining additional anarchy stacks, it just helps with uh, getting those anarchy stacks and stacking them. Um, then we have Discord, increases your fire rate by 25%, uh, accuracy by 65%, regenerates 3% of your max health per second while Discord is uh, active. So this pretty much negates the loss of uh, the health by this one, um, as well as another skill does by regenerating your health. Then we have Rational Anarchist, you just instantly gain 25 stacks of Anarchy. Um, as soon as you kill an enemy uh, and then we have the ninth degree every fifth bullet that hits an enemy will reflect towards another nearby enemy so pretty much just ricochets another bullet towards a nearby enemy um, and just does damage so yeah just more damage so yeah that's the ordered chaos um, skill tree then we've got little big trouble we've got more pep which increases your chances of applying burn electrocute corrode and slag status effects Electrocute chance is plus 20%, Ignite chance is plus 10, Corrode is 10%, and Slag is 10%. Then we've got Myelin, increases shock damage resistance by 60% and increases your shield capacity by 30% with the Anarchist class mod on. Then we've got e Evil Enchantress, which is another kill skill. Killing an enemy increases the damage that your burn, electrocute, and corrode status effects deal for a short period of time. Elemental effect damage is, is increased by 30%. Then we have shock and R. Reloading your gun causes an electrical explosion damaging nearby enemies. So every time you reload it does a uh, sort of like a mini nova blast of shock. Then we have electrical burn. When your electrocute status effects deal damage to enemies, there's a chance they will burst into flames and take burn damage. The amount of burn damage is based on the electrocute damage dealt. So this pairs well with wires don't talk. Increases all shock damage and electrocute damage that you inflict by 15%. So this will enhance the electrical burn on this which it's far more important to get this at plus 5 than uh, get the itch extra burn charts because you'll just have less damage so yeah those two are quite good paired well then we have outburst not shooting an enemy for a short time grants you a stack of outburst the next time you shoot an enemy all stacks of outburst are consumed and you deal slag damage the more stacks are consumed the higher the skill rank the greater the chance of slagging the target so you deal increased damage 
of slag damage while getting the chance of slagging the enemy. Um, so pretty much this will just stack while you're not shooting anyone and then it gets to a plus five stack and then once that's at plus five you shoot an enemy and then you have a chance to slag it while doing more damage. And that's the little big trouble skill tree. Then we have close enough. The bullets that hit walls or other objects have a chance to ricochet off towards a nearby enemy. Ricochet bullets deal reduced damage. So bullet ricochet chance is at 50% and then ricochet bullet damage is at minus 50%. So all of your ricocheted bullets do uh, half the damage of what you'll normally do. Then we have cooking up with trouble where your gun's magazine size is full where you generate health. So while your mag's full, this will just negate the loss of the 4% uh, health. So that's quite nice to have while you're behind cover or... yeah. The better half, when your magazine is past half empty, you gain increased fire rate. So you get an increase of 60% fire rate, so that's real good. And the last skill that I have is Unstoppable Force, which is the another kill skill. So this is the... Um, skill that I was talking about that pairs with blood soaked shields and this is why you don't want to max this out as it will be a waste of a skill point um, so pretty much when you kill an enemy you'll get to 80% shield and then this one here killing an enemy grants you movement speed and causes your shield to regenerate for a short time so you get an increase of 70% movement speed and regenerate 8% of your max shield per second so you pretty much should get back up to full shields and like uh, pretty much instantly uh, with those two paired together. Um, the only one I want to talk about will be Fancy Mathematics. Don't get this as this Unstoppable Force and uh, Blood Soak Shields negate uh, needing the recharge delay and recharge rate as you kill an enemy in it pretty much just instantly restores your shields so yeah that's the build and then we'll jump over to the guns so these are the four guns that i'll recommend there's another couple that i'll recommend with gauge as well the rest just they can work with gauge but a high anarchy stacks is just too inaccurate to even consider using them um, but you can use them at lower anarchy stacks uh, while using a B, like the um, Sandhawk. So the peak opener, still viable with the decreased accuracy. It just mounts enemies. Pitchfork's still good. This is your go-to sniper, as well as the Pimpernel. You want to get this in all elements. Then we have the Conference Call. This is your go-to shotgun. You want this in all elements. And the Norfleet, which is your... Um, best rocket launcher you also want in all elements as well these four will be your main guns for the build and then you want a grog nozzle or some type of healing weapon um, so you can heal yourself and then you also want the pimpernel which is also good on gauge then we have the blockade i just like this because you have a high capacity and you gain damage resistance um, which is quite nice in OP10, so it's a lot harder for you to die with this shield. And we've got the Anarchist, I prefer this over other ones, gives you uh, gun damage and um, good skills that are plus 5. The Magic Missile for uh, slagging enemies, you want this at level 30 so it doesn't damage you. And then we've got um, hang on, a Bone to the Ancients, that deals increased shock damage by 42%. And we've got a unkept Harold, which is just one of the best guns in the game. We've got a Logan's gun for the sham, uh, a sham shield rocket regen. Um, so you can regenerate rockets with the Norfleet. Uh, Grog nozzle for slagging and healing. Uh, just another element, Norfleet. The Hive, it's alright. The Norfleet's better, but still it's all right the interfacer it's usable at like one to two hundred stacks of anarchy any more than that and it's just too inaccurate 
um, so you can pair this with the B at like 100 stacks and um, deal pretty decent damage. Conference calls just, yeah, good. Orphan Maker, this is your go-to um, stacking anarchy weapon. So you pretty much just go to Marcus's um, dummy uh, place and just shoot the dummy and just hold the trigger. Um, and yeah, you can just hold the trigger and just play on your phone and get your four to six hundred stacks of anarchy. Um, you can also sign in a split screen account uh, or get a friend in your lobby that has the hoarder class mod on the Salvador. And you can just sit there and not have to worry about buying ammo while doing this. Um, then we have a slag of slagging enemies. Um, Sandhawk's good, but it's nearly unusable at 400 stacks of anarchy. Um, I could show you why now. So pretty much if you just look at all this, it just goes everywhere. So if that's an enemy there, it's just, it's not even like hitting Lilith. So yeah. It's still good um, combo to have at low anarchy stacks with the uh, B Sandhawk combo. Um, then we've got the Lyotas, which are all good, and then your Pimpernels, which is your secondary um, sniper I'd use. Pitchfork and the Pimpernel are your go-to snipers. And then we have Bone to the Ancients, Incendiary Damage, Corrosive Damage, uh, Sheer Spadge uh, increases your pistol damage and fire rate. And then we've got the Deputy's Badge, which you want to pair with your Orphan Maker because it increases the reload speed uh, while you're stacking Anarchy. So you um, pair those two together while stacking them. And then we have the Legendary Catalyst. This is my secondary class mod that I'll use for this build. Um, it increases team elemental effect damage. I don't know if it's 52 or 62%. I can't read it there. Uh, I think it's 62. Then we have Legendary Macromancer and Roboteer. That's for your Death Trap builds. Um, and then the Slayer of Terramorphos. This one will give you an extra 200 stacks of Anarchy. So you can get up to 600 stacks. And deal massive damage. It's probably only viable to use this with the North Fleet, if you want to do a North Fleet gauge build, uh, potentially the Peak Opener could be good. I haven't tested it as well as these other weapons, um, but you could test that for yourself. And if the conference call still does what it needs to do, then you can just chuck this one on and gain that extra 200 stacks. Got the electric chair, just a decent uh, grenade. Crossfire, just a good slagging grenade. You want this at level 30 so it doesn't damage you. A longbow storm front, a modded storm front, which seems to have gone around the community. It's pretty much one of the best grenades in the game. Obviously, you can't farm it, but if you can pick this up from someone, definitely recommend it. It's just fun to use. We've got a longbow quasar, shock fastball and a chain lightning for healing yourself or holding a moxie's weapon like the grog nozzle and then we have the evolution for elemental resistance antagonist just an overall great shield of great capacity and slags uh, enemies as well um, and deflects bullets sham for regenerating rocket ammo uh, the b for just the amp damage and the grounded black hole, which seems to be good on gauge as well for the uh, hidden effect. Then we have the toothpick interfacer Florentine, does shock and slag damage, butchers, loader, conference call, uh, barter boom for rocket jumping, a slow hand for slagging enemies, and I'm pretty sure this heals you as well. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, I'm pretty certain this is a Moxie weapon. Uh, Sincero for knocking off Pyro Pete's helmet and um, trespassing through the shield of the Chief in the Veracitous fight. The Hydra for the Hyperius fight and for the Antagonist slash Hydra um, deflection build where you shoot this and deflect off Hyperius shield and off your antagonist shield and just do massive damage. You can also use other shotguns as well. A hail in all elements. 
Fibber and all elements, Lady Fist and all elements, uh, Slagging Pimpernel, a Heartbreaker for damage and healing, and a Twister, which is just alright. You can pick this up, that's not necessary to have this gun. But yeah, the four, five main weapons will be Peak Opener, Pitchfork and all elements, Conference Call and all elements, North Fleet and all elements, and your, um, uh, where is it? The Pimpernel and all elements. And yeah, I'll show you um, some gameplay as well of this build. Let's head on over to the uh, Bloodshot Stronghold. So I'll show you the peak opener first. Oops, didn't mean to get down there. Yeah, just absolutely decimates enemies. And then I'll show you, case you the pitchfork. Deals pretty good damage. And I'll show you the conference call. Perhaps just ricochets bullets everywhere. Works well with those ricochet skills. Spam it and let it do its work. And then we've got the uh, North Fleet as well. So I will switch over to the Fire one. It just decimates everything as well. Then I will chuck on the pimper now. It's pretty much only good in like short ranges. as the accuracy just isn't that great. Okay, now I'm Oops. Back. And yeah, that's the only problem with the peak opener, is that you can down yourself. And yeah, that's the pimp now. So yeah, all these guns, really good in IP10 North Gauge. And yeah, if you've got a North Fleet, then you can just get yourself up. Like that. Quite easy. Yeah, 
no slag and yeah, still melts. Yeah, for this build, I just like running the blockade as it just keeps me up. It keeps me from going down. Switch over to the shock one. One last thing I'll show you. I just like this grenade, the Shock Stormfront. It's also really good on Salvador because while he guns Erks, he can throw two. So pretty much you just throw this wherever, spam the shit out of it, and yeah, everyone's just dead. In the whole room. Probably chuck about three of them in a room, and the whole room's just done. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, if you enjoyed or thought, thought this video was helpful at all, uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.